Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Anthony and in this video you'll learn the true definition of money and the properties a currency needs to have in order for it to be useful. Then we'll give you an objective comparison between Bitcoin, gold, and fiat currency to help you understand their similarities and differences. Please note, I did not make this video to give Bitcoin the most praise just because this is a cryptocurrency focused channel, but rather I made this to give you the facts about money and share my honest opinions. But before we get started, I just want to thank all our new and returning subscribers for their continued support. If you're passionate about developing a diverse investment portfolio and interested in learning how to responsibly incorporate speculative investments like cryptocurrency in your overall wealth building strategy, then don't forget to subscribe to our channel in the bottom right corner of your screen to stay connected. Here we go. Everybody converses with money every day, and we all know what money is, but let's talk about it from the perspective of an economist. An economist would define money as something that serves as a medium of exchange, a unit of accounting, and a store of value. So sound money does all three of these things. And this video, we're going to be talking about and comparing, as I mentioned in the intro, Bitcoin to fiat currency and gold. Now, I'm going to assume if you're watching this, you know what Bitcoin is as the original cryptocurrency. I and mean, I'm sure you probably know what gold is, but you may not know the term fiat currency. A lot of people, especially if you're new around here, you don't know that. So the term fiat money or fiat currency is generally associated with a classification of money that has been authorized for use by a country's government. So this is sovereign currency. The US dollar is a form of fiat currency. The euro is a form of fiat currency, right? Wherever you live, your currency issued by the government can be considered fiat currency. In a minute, we're going to take a look at the individual properties of money a little bit closer, but let's just get into some of these truths about what money is a little bit deeper. So a medium of exchange. So what does that mean? You need to be able to use it and buy things with it, whether that be a good, like a product, like in this case, a pan or a service. Like if you're at a massage parlor and you're getting a massage, for instance, any service, a unit of account is just a standard numerical unit of measurement of market value for goods and services and other transactions. And this helps you compare goods using a common system. So here they're talking about houses in Japan and comparing them to each other using the yen. And again, this, so in this case, they're talking about fiat currency. The yen is another example of fiat currency. And a store of value, if you don't know, a store of value is something that should have value and maintain that value over a period of time. So for example, an ounce of gold could buy you a toga in Roman times, yet it could actually buy you a nice suit today. And those are two equivalents. Now let's get into the properties of money. So the first property we're going to talk about here is durability. An item must be able to withstand being used repeatedly. And to go deeper into that, a perishable good or good that degrades quickly with use in exchanges will not be as useful for future transactions. So this is one of the charts I found online. There are a few of these that exist. I happen to really like this one, and if I just want to give some credit where credit's due, this was created by David Gerard, and he used a letter grading system. So, of course, A plus is the best grade, F is the worst. So, on durability, Bitcoin scored a B, gold scored an A plus, being basically, I don't want to say indestructible, but almost indestructible, so really durable. And fiat got a C, I guess when you think about cash, in terms of that, fiat cash could be... um something that gets deteriorated over time. Next up, we have the portability. Let's see how these three rank. So individuals can carry money with them and transfer it to others. So let's take a look how these three stack up against each other as far as portability goes. Bitcoin takes the cake in this category, getting an A+, really easy to store. You can store it on your phone. You can store it in cold storage. You can keep it on a computer. There's a lot of different ways to carry your Bitcoin and you can carry large amounts of Bitcoin with you, by the way, in a very small device. Gold is the exact opposite. This is one of the main areas that gold falters. Gold is very big. And if you want to purchase a very expensive item like a home or a property, gold is going to be very cumbersome to carry around with you. And fiat gets a B, middle of the road there. I think it's safe to say we're talking about cash here. 
The next property that I want to talk about with you is limited in supply. The supply of money in circulation ensures that value remains relatively constant. Now, this is probably the most important one to talk about because this is a true sticking point for fiat currencies. And on this chart, they represent supply by scarce, right? So fiat currency is failing in the scarcity category because governments have the right to print as much of it as they need. And just the idea that the U.S. currency and fiat currencies in general are not scarce at all generally makes them susceptible to inflation. Gold gets an A because it is scarce, but we don't exactly know how much there is. You know, theoretically, there is a limited amount of gold, but we don't exactly know because we can't see it. Bitcoin, however, has 21 million. That is their supply limit. It is extremely scarce. And if you've studied Bitcoin at all or read their white paper, you know that there will never be any more Bitcoin that can exist. It will only be 21 million. So they win that category with an A+. Next is the acceptability. So everyone must be able to use the money for transactions. That one's not on the chart we were looking at, but I would have to give that to gold and fiat over cryptocurrency just because cryptocurrency is so new and many merchants don't accept it. Next, let's talk about divisibility. Any form of money should be able to be divided into smaller units of value. And Bitcoin scores the highest on this category because they are divisible by up to eight decimal places. Whereas fiat currency, I'm going to use the US dollar because I live in America. This only goes out two decimal places. And if you didn't know, we measure Bitcoin in what we call Satoshis. Just the way we measure the US dollar in cents, like I have 50 cents. Well, you could also have 50 Satoshis. And let me just read this for you to drive this po point home. It would actually take 100 million Satoshis to equal one Bitcoin. Gold gets a C. Of course, you could break down gold to any size you want, but it's not always convenient to do because gold is a very hard metallic surface. And fiat currency gets a B. It's okay. Like I said, we go out two decibel places on that. And the last on our chart is fungibility. One unit is viewed as being interchangeable with another. For example, one ounce of pure gold is equivalent to any other ounce of pure gold. It does not matter in which form these ounces were traded. A bar of pure gold is the same as freshly minted pure gold or an ingot of pure gold. Currencies, as one would expect, are fungible as well as it allows them to function in the real world on a global scale. Bitcoin is proving to be a very difficult creature in this regard. It's not fungible in the traditional sense, although there are some caveats. Individual units of Bitcoin have the same size. One Bitcoin is as valuable as one Bitcoin, and one Satoshi is as valuable as another Satoshi. However, Bitcoins leave a trace on the blockchain. So this is something that you don't really have to worry about with cash or gold, but Bitcoin can be traced back if you use advanced chain analytic technology. Bitcoin transactions can be traced and are not as private as say cash or even gold, meaning that you can kind of trace their history, which makes them a bit less fungible. And we talk about fungibility here and see how they rank. You can see gold has the highest rank here. And although fiat and Bitcoin are equal in these two regards. Next on this list, we talk about established history, and this is the biggest sticking point with Bitcoin. And I'm going to say this to you, to all my subscribers and everyone watching, Bitcoin is at a crossroads right now. We do have to see how Bitcoin performs over the next 12 to 24 months with the halving coming and with this real world potential recession, or even, I don't even want to say it, but potential depression surrounding COVID-19. Um, Bitcoin was theoretically made for something like this and was made to be a hedge against fiat currency, but it remains to be seen and we has to prove itself to do that. As of right now, and I don't want to be a Bitcoin bear because I love Bitcoin and I am invested in Bitcoin just for the record, but Bitcoin is correlating and correlated to, I should say, the U.S. stock market right now, and it's not acting in the same manner as gold is. Gold in these uncertain times is outperforming Bitcoin. I don't know if that will continue. 
And But gold also has an amazing history. If you just look at the gold price chart, I want to just show you this. If you just look, if you would have bought gold back in, let's say, 1917, which is insane to think about. It could have been $400. And of course, today, it's worth roughly $1,700. It's actually higher than that at the moment. It says $1,600 here. The dollar bill, as far as its established history, or fiat currency, is a C. I believe this rating exists because inflation has hit the dollar and hit it hard. I was reading something that said like 100 years ago, you could buy leather boots for $1.00. And now you can only buy like a song on iTunes or maybe a candy bar. And so it's really um, been hit hard by inflation over the years. Last category, Bitcoin wins in a landslide, which is censorship resistant. Because of course, Bitcoin is decentralized and fiat loses because it is built by the government. And gold somewhere in the middle because governments can always intervene. So I do hope that gives you a better understanding of money, of what it is, and what the most sound source of money is. And I know the thumbnail in my video said best in class, but I'm not going to tell you what the winner it is. I'll leave that up to you to decide. But why don't you comment in the comments section, which form of currency do you believe is the most sound source of money and why? I would love to hear some of those comments. And I always love learning from you guys. I want to remind you, if you're invested or considering investing in cryptocurrency, never invest more than you can afford to lose and just enjoy the ride as time passes. Also, if this video piqued your interest and you do wanna consider buying some Bitcoin, I have a link to a Coinbase account. It is an affiliate link, but if you click it and create an account through that, both you and I will get $10 of free Bitcoin and I invite you to check that out. Aside from that, I wanna thank you for watching, wish you well, and I'll see you next time.